who doesn't love a relaxing day at the lake? On a hot summer day, it's the perfect place to cool off, or perhaps to drift along in a boat with your fishing pole, with the sounds of children splashing and the smell of a barbecue in the air. A day at the lake is something we're familiar with and look forward to. There's hardly anyone who doesn't enjoy a good dip in the water. Sometimes, though, the lake pulls you in and doesn't let you go. Lake Sydney Lanier is a reserve that was created by the construction of the Buford Dam on the Chattahoochee River. It's named after the poet Sydney Lanier who wrote a poem about the connected river called Song of the Chattahoochee. Once the dam was complete, the river backed up and filled 59 square miles of land, turning it into a lake. The majority of the lake is in Hall County, but quite a bit of it is in Forsyth County, and both of those counties had a number of communities on the land that would soon be underwater. Farms, homes, churches, mills, and even the Gainesville Speedway racetrack were all sitting where the state government wanted to create what would become one of the largest lakes in Georgia. The Army Corps of Engineers came in and got to work measuring and planning. Through surveys and math equations, engineers determined the area that the new lake would cover, and in that area were about 700 families who would need to move. The government offered people money for their farmland. They ensured the farmers that they were being given a fair price for their land, but most of it had been in their families for generations, and the residents didn't see how they could put an accurate value on that. Some families took the money, only to realize later that they couldn't live on what the government had paid them. Some held out, but eventually caved. One resident had to be forcefully removed from his property. One thing that the state government didn't have to deal with was looking like their choice of locations was racially motivated. If the land was largely populated by black families, there would be accusations of the government stomping out minority communities. But by the time Lake Lanier was conceptualized, Forsyth County was already a community that had forced out all of its black residents. In 1912, there were 1,098 black residents in Forsyth County, Georgia. Some of them owned property in this area that was already 90% white, and tensions at the time were high. That year, an 18-year-old white woman named May Crow was sexually assaulted and murdered in a small town called Oscarville. She was found unconscious under mysterious circumstances in the woods and taken to the hospital where she later died. The crimes were pinned on four young black people who lived nearby. They were 16-year-old Ernest Knox, his 18-year-old cousin Oscar Daniel, Oscar's sister 22-year-old Trussie Daniel, and 24-year-old Robert Edwards. There was no evidence that any of these individuals committed a crime. They were just the closest black youths at the time, so it was more of a, they must have done it, situation. The day after Robert's arrest, a white mob invaded his jail cell. He was shot, dragged through the streets, and hanged from a telephone pole just outside the courthouse in the nearby town of Cumming. Groups of white people formed mobs which were known as Night Riders and went door to door with torches and guns, demanding black residents leave town. They burned down churches and businesses, forcing most of the black residents to flee the county. In October of 1912, a jury convicted Ernest Knox and Oscar Daniel for the rape and murder of May Crow. They were led outside and publicly hanged in front of roughly 5,000 people. The charges against Trussie Daniel were dropped. After this public display of disregard for the lives of an entire race of people, the rest of the black residents cleared out of town. Some of the black families were able to sell their properties, but many had no choice but to just abandon them. They were quickly taken over by the remaining residents. When the families that were in the path of the new lake were paid by the government, some of them were paid for land that they never legally owned. It technically belonged to people who fled the area. With the people cleared out, the Army Corps of Engineers began clearing the land. Though many structures remained, they had to clear out anything that would be hazardous in the water. They also had to cut down trees that would be taller than the water level. Then there was the matter of the graveyard. For graves that were clearly marked, family was contacted and the remains were relocated. 
for the graves that weren't marked or if family couldn't be located, they stayed right where they were. Once the land was cleared and the dam was complete, the water began filling the area. The hydroelectric dam provides electricity to much of the area as well as flood control for the Chattahoochee River, and the lake provides drinking water to Atlanta. Its size and location makes it popular amongst locals and tourists, but people believe that the sins of the past have cursed the lake. The lake sees a high amount of drownings and boating accidents each year, but that might not be that alarming seeing as it gets about 10 million visitors annually. Some people are certain that the lake is haunted, though. People will tell you the story of the lady in the lake, a young woman who crashed her car into the water and drowned, who grabs unsuspecting swimmers and drags them underwater. Then, of course, there are the bodies left in the graveyard who are still searching for a permanent resting place. Their state of limbo has cast a shadow over the lake that is responsible for much of the death in the area. Maybe righting the wrongs of the past will help the lost souls at the bottom of the lake find peace. Forsyth County remained all white until 1990. There were two civil rights marches through the county to the courthouse and coming in 1987, which were met by heavy protest. But by 1990, there were 16 black property owners as well as many Hispanic and Asian property owners. It may take time, but it seems that non-whites are returning to a community that refused to tolerate them in the past. If you want to take a swim in Lake Lanier, be sure to stay safe. The actions of those around you can have disastrous consequences, and don't forget to watch out for the ghosts who may want to drag you down to the bottom. Thanks for letting us tell you this sinister story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on, hit like, rate it, or leave a comment. Join us next week where we'll take you somewhere sinister.